Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have a severe weather outbreak that is likely today all the way through Thursday, April 27th. We'll get into those details. And then a late season cold blast will continue with well below normal temperatures through the end of the month and into early May. And then we'll look at the long range weather pattern with warmer temperatures returning, which could also return us to a classic severe weather setup, especially across the Great Plains. As we go into the second week in May, we'll get into those details later on in today's video. But looking here outside this afternoon, we have a severe weather threat on tap across the southern plains. We have a level 2 of 5, a slight risk of severe storms issued by the Storm Prediction Center across west central Texas here, just to the west of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex this afternoon with a marginal risk that extends all the way up into the Texas Panhandle, the Oklahoma Panhandle, northeastern New Mexico, all the way up even into southeastern Colorado as we get through later on today. Looking at the hazards from the storms, we could be seeing some very large hail, again, west of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, back here into west central Texas, from Wichita Falls, Vernon, Texas, and then southward toward the San Antonio region. We could be seeing storms producing hail over two inches in diameter and some tornadoes with the initial storms as well. So definitely something to keep an eye on as these storms develop later on today, especially as we get into the evening and the overnight hours. But if you guys like detailed weather breakdowns, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, now is the time to press the subscribe button down below. And it's also very important to press the like button down below as well. It helps to get all this weather information out to as many people as possible. I definitely appreciate it. But going through this afternoon, we have a piece of energy moving across portions of the Southern Plains ahead of our main piece of energy that lingers back here into Utah and Western Colorado this afternoon. And again, a piece of this will break off and push across the Red River here and across the Southern Plains as we go into tonight. And what this will do is promote rising dew points, getting back into the 50s and even the 60s down here into West Central Texas, all the way up to the Red River this afternoon and evening. And that will contribute to moderate instability values of 1,000 to perhaps as much as 2,000 joules per kilogram across those slight risk areas. And what's interesting as well is that the lapse rate, the temperatures that cool aloft, is going to be very steep with these storms. So definitely going to be looking at a very large hail potential as these storms initially grow through the evening hours. So looking here at noon time frame, most of the storms are north across Oklahoma and southern Kansas to the north of the surface boundary. So these are going to be more elevated type of storms producing the hail, also the heavy rainfall. Not too concerned about any severe weather with these storms. Storms, but farther south, pretty dry, maybe a shower or storm. Again, can't rule that out through the early afternoon hours or really through much of the late afternoon. But I think once we get to about 6 o'clock this evening, we'll start to see our piece of energy move across the Texas Panhandle and then down here toward the Red River. And that's when we'll see a spark in supercells developing across the Wichita Falls area on up there toward the Fort Sill and Oklahoma area as well. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And then as these storms progress, we'll have waves of supercells moving through with the strongest of the wave of supercells moving through after midnight. So this will be about midnight and we're seeing some big big hailers back here in the northwest Texas. Those will dive down across northern and central portions of Texas through your Wednesday morning time frame. And again, more north into Oklahoma, into southern Kansas, getting into Arkansas. These will be more hail producers, but probably not to, you know, two inches or larger in diameter. The big hailstorms will be down into central Texas through the overnight hours and into your Wednesday morning. But then as we go into Wednesday, our main piece of energy that is moving across Utah and Colorado today will be diving down toward the Amarillo area by Wednesday afternoon and then crossing over into Oklahoma and North Texas through Wednesday night and even on Thursday morning. And that's where we have a more significant round of severe storms on tap for Wednesday tomorrow. The enhanced risk is in place across North Texas here. This does include the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Tyler, Texas, and getting down toward the Waco region as well. So definitely want to be on high alert even into your Wednesday 
Wednesday, and we could again see more of those initial storms producing two inch or larger type of hailstones across the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex back up here toward Wichita Falls and then down in toward portions there of Central Texas. And then we have a chance for some isolated tornadoes again centered across the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. But it's really as the system develops into the overnight hours, as it develops into more of a squall line or a mesoscale convective system. That's where we're going to see more of that enhancement to the damaging wind potential as it crosses into East Texas and then eventually into southwestern Arkansas and western Louisiana through the Shreveport area, Texarkana, and then down toward the Lake Charles area through your Wednesday afternoon and evening. So looking here at the dew point temperatures, we're going to have plenty of them. Into the 60s and even the 70s we go with the dew point temperatures by peak daytime heating on Wednesday, and that will contribute to some strong instability values over 2,000 joules per kilogram, even approaching 3,000 joules per kilogram here into East Texas, just south of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And we also have very strong shear here in the environment. So this will help to organize a lot of those storms as they push from west to east across this environment Wednesday evening. So again, noon time frame just to the north of the boundary. We're seeing that same theme with more elevated type of storms, heavy rain, maybe some smaller hail. Not too much worried about the severe weather threat at that time. But as we go through peak daytime heating, this is six o'clock on your Wednesday. We have more of these strong supercells developing out here in West Texas. And these could be the ones to initially produce some tornadoes and also some two inch hail. This is getting toward the dusk time frame on Wednesday and then after midnight this is where we're going to start to develop that MCS or squall line as it pushes across north central Texas here and on up there toward the Red River into southeastern Oklahoma. And then the uh, the weaker part of it will be up there toward the Little Rock region. But again, we could be seeing more widespread damaging winds by this point, And that will be pressing its way farther to the east across southwestern Arkansas into western Louisiana into Thursday morning. And then Thursday comes around. And again, that warm sector will be down here across the central Gulf Coast states. So we have another marginal risk for severe storms on Thursday across Louisiana, central and southern. Mississippi, central and southern Louis, uh, Alabama here, and into northwestern Florida during that time frame with mainly some damaging winds and hail, but an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out even on Thursday as well. But with these storms, like I've been mentioning, heavy rainfall will be a big key role with these storms here, especially as they move through southern portions of Kansas into Oklahoma here and into Arkansas and even North Texas. A lot of these areas could be seeing beneficial rains. I know there's a lot of drought out here and look at this guys, two to four inches of rain moving across central Oklahoma from now through the end of the week on Friday, April 28th and even some two inch rainfall amounts over here into say the Fort Smith area, getting into Little Rock and even the Memphis area as well and even down here into the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. So definitely some beneficial rains going through the end end of the week, but it will come at a cost because a lot of this rainfall will be coming down in a short amount of time. We do have the flash flooding threat from today into your Wednesday morning. That is across southeastern Arc uh, southeastern Colorado, getting into uh, Oklahoma here, southwestern Kansas, the Texas Panhandle, and then over here into western Arkansas. And then that pushes even farther east again across the Arklatex, down here into Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, and Tulsa as we go through Wednesday and into Thursday. But going through the rest of the week, it's not going to stop there. This storm system will continue to spray a lot of rainfall across portions of the eastern two-thirds of the country. In fact, we'll be seeing a lot of heavy rain across the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, including the I-95 corridor, and then all the way south through the Carolinas, Georgia, and into Florida, with many areas seeing over two inches of rain as we go through that Monday, May 1st time frame, and even some rain up here into the Midwest as well, across the La Crosse region, getting through Milwaukee and Chicago during this time frame. But looking here at the temperature Temperature trends for today again well, well below normal temperatures going through this afternoon into tonight and then into Wednesday during the middle of this week we're still seeing those well below normal temperature anomalies hanging out across the eastern two-thirds of the country. 
So looking at those temperatures this afternoon, we're back up into the 40s and 50s, primarily across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes and the Northeast, but even some cooler weather with the rain showers along and north of that stationary boundary down here into Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, and portions of Arkansas with those 50s down here as well. But as we go into tonight, more frost and freeze concerns up here across the eastern Dakotas, Minnesota, getting through northern Iowa, northern Illinois, getting into portions of Wisconsin, Michigan. Michigan, and then much of the Great Lakes region into the Northeast as we go through tonight. But farther south, we're not worried about frost and freeze conditions, but it will be a chilly night as temperatures get back down into the 40s out here across the Southern Plains and into the Tennessee Valley. And we also have to deal with another cold day here, or at least chilly day for temperatures on Wednesday with more 50s and 60s all across the North Central United States during the middle of this week. And this cool weather pattern will stick around through the end of this month and even the first few days of May. This goes all the way through Thursday, May 4th, and you can see these blue anomalies showing up across the eastern two-thirds of the country. That, that means below normal temperatures are likely, and that ridge of high pressure will contribute to above normal temperatures across the western third of the country through Thursday, May 4th. And it looks like as we get toward the end of the first week of May, toward Monday, May 8th, it looks like the pattern will We'll start to break down. The trough will begin to move its way farther east. The ridge will move farther east and will begin to replace the ridge with that trough across the east and then have more troughs across the western United States going towards the end of the first week there in towards May. And what this will do is change our uh, completely change our weather pattern as we go into the second week in May. So looking here at Sunday, uh, April 30th, we have the trough in the east. We have the ridge spiking all the way up into Alaska and the western Canadian provinces here. And of course, the western United States as well through that Sunday time frame. But look, as we go into the first week in May, we start to move that trough farther east here. Again, still across the East Coast, but that ridge will start to build across the Great Plains in the upper Midwest, and we'll have a new trough developing down here into the Pacific Southwest here um, across California into Nevada and even western Arizona into the first week in May. And then by the time we get into the second week in May, that ridge continues to push farther to the east and amplify all the way up into Canada. And we have more trouble brewing as another strong trough will try to traverse the country slowly but surely through that second week in May toward Mother's Day weekend across the western and uh, the central portions of the country. So what this means for a severe weather perspective, well, uh, the first week in May, dew points will be pretty dry up here to the north, so I'm not expecting too many significant severe weather events, at least across the Midwest the Ohio Valley or the Northeast, but we could have a few severe weather events and maybe a strong event or two across Texas, getting into Louisiana and the immediate Gulf Coast into the first week in May. And that will, again, contribute to more of some moderate instability values for severe storms during that time, kind of where we see it right now. But as we get into the second week in May, and this goes closer toward Mother's Day weekend just before then, and you see those dew point temperatures rising well to the north all the way up to the U.S. Canadian Canadian border up here into the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, with much deeper moisture across the central and southern plains, and that will contribute to at least moderate, if not strong, instability values by this time. And then as we get into Mother's Day weekend now, toward the middle of May, that's when it all breaks loose with a lot of moisture across the middle of the country returning, a nice dry line set up again across the Great Plains, and strong instability that all signs do lead toward a classic severe weather setup as we get closer toward the second week in May and toward Mother's Day weekend. So here is my severe weather forecast. So from May 1st through the 7th, I think it's possible, again, a lot of the same areas that we'll see it today and tomorrow will also likely see it potentially at times through May 1st and the 7th here across the Southern Plains into the Arklatex and parts of Dixie Alley. But as we get into the second week in May, going right straight through Mother's Day weekend through May 15th, I think it's much more likely across the Great Plains here, classic dry line, Great Plains setups here, 
with tornadoes probably becoming more likely during this period. But even in the yellow box around this, I still do think it's possible we see severe storms in places like Chicago, um, uh, La Crosse, getting up here into the Twin Cities region, and then farther east here across Nashville, getting in toward the Indianapolis region as well on that line as we go toward that Mother's Day weekend time frame. But if you want additional weather forecast updates here along with this channel, be sure to click the description down below and follow me on Twitter at HWeather. 420. I definitely appreciate it. And I also appreciate everybody watching my videos each and every morning. Be sure to press the like button down below. Give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. A great rest of your week, and I will see you all in the next video.